We're going to look at a very simple linear programming problem. And it's the following problem. Minimizing x plus y subject to 3x plus y greater than or equal to 3 and x plus 2y greater than or equal to 1. Instead of tackling this problem directly, which we can solve by graphical method, we'll look at a slightly different problem. And the problem we're going to look at is minimizing z subject to z greater than or equal to x plus y, 3x plus y greater than or equal to 3, and x plus 2y greater than or equal to 1. You notice that these two problems are quite similar. In fact, I have the same constraints in both, except that the problem in green has one extra constraint and also one extra variable. Now, the extra constraint in the green problem is quite special. It involves the new variable and the objective function of my original problem. My claim is, if I have an optimal solution to this green problem, then I also have an optimal solution for the problem P. Why is that? Suppose that x star, y star, z star give an optimal solution. The first thing to observe is that z star must be the same as x star plus y star. Well, there are only two possibilities for x star, y star, and z star. Because of the first constraint, z star can be strictly bigger than x star plus y star, or z star can be equal to x star plus y star. But we're looking at an optimal solution. We are looking at a solution that has the minimum possible value for z. Well, if z star is bigger than x star y star, we can get something better by setting z star equal to x star plus y star. All right? So in an optimal solution, x star y star z star, z star has to equal to x star y star. Now the claim is x star y star is an optimal solution for p. Well, first of all, x star y star is feasible. Right? It satisfies all these constraints. And the objective function value for this is also z star, right? Because x star plus y star is z star. To show that this is optimal, we just have to show that you cannot get anything better for p. But if you have something better, if there is an x bar y bar, say, if x bar plus y bar is less than x star plus y star, then that will give me a better solution for this green problem because I can now set, I can set z bar to x bar plus y bar and since z bar is less than z star we have a better solution so that's not possible uh, it is now sufficient to consider the green problem instead these two problems are equivalent and now let's stare at this green problem this is saying one to find among all x y z satisfying one that has the minimum value for z okay so this green optimization problem up here is the same as saying okay if we look at all these constraints all the solutions x y z that satisfy these constraints what is one that gives you the minimum possible value for z now to answer that question, we just have to find out how low z can be. We do that by eliminating the variables y and x. Okay, Remember the way we eliminate variables from inequalities. We try to pair up the inequalities in the following way. For each inequality in which the variable, say y, is paired up positively, we pair up with an inequality in which y appears negatively. There are two inequalities in which y has a positive coefficient and one in which y has a negative coefficient. So, to solve this system, it's enough to solve the following new system. 1 plus 2 and 1 plus 1 half times 3. Okay, that will give us a system without the y, yet 
equivalent to the original system. Okay, so z plus 2x bigger than 3 and z minus 1 half is greater than a half. If we label these two employees 4 and 5 and take the system 4 plus 4 times 5 will have eliminated x from the system. So this will give us 5z greater than 5. And so z must be at least 1. Well, what this is saying is as long as z is at least 1, we can find an x such that x and z together satisfy 4 and 5. But what that means is for such x and z, we can find a y such that x, y, z satisfy 1, 2, 3. Now, for any x, y, z satisfying 1, 2, 3, x and z must also satisfy 4 and 5. And z must also satisfy 5z greater than 5. So what this is saying is, over all solutions, x, y, z, to 1, 2, 3, the smallest possible value for z is 1. And what if we set z equal to 1? Well, if we set z equal to 1, then x can be set to 1 as well, because 1, 1 satisfy in 44 and 5. And if we set z equal to 1, x equal to 1, we can set y equal to 0. Then x, y, z satisfy inequalities 1, 2, and 3. That means that x, y equal to 1, 0 is an optimal solution to p. Now notice that we can get a proof of this as follows. So remember that this inequality z greater than equal to 1 is obtained by multiplying 1 fifth to both sides of 5z greater than equal to 5. But this is precisely inequality 4 plus 4 times inequality 5. But inequality 4 is 1 plus 2 and inequality 5 is 1 plus 1 half 2 thirds. So to get z greater than equal to 1, what we need is the following. 1 fifth of 4 plus 4 times 5, but 4 is 1 plus 2. And 5 is 1 plus 1 half times 3. This is precisely just inequality 1 plus 1 fifth times inequality 2 plus 2 fifth times inequality 3. But inequality 2 is precisely 3x plus y greater than 3 and inequality 3 is x plus 2y greater than 1. Now if we take 1 fifth times this and 2 fifth times that, what do we get? Well, we get 3 fifth plus 2 fifth, so it's x plus well, 1 fifth y plus 4 fifth y it's just y, and 3 over 5 plus 2 over 5 is 1. So what this means is, any x satisfying these two inequalities, 3x plus y greater than 3, x plus 2y greater than 1, must also satisfy x plus y greater than 1. But x plus y is the objective function, so there's no solution x, y that will give you anything better than 1. But here, we have a solution that gives me objective function better than 1. So this is a proof that we have found an optimal solution. So the proof is basically this. One fifth times the first inequality and two fifth times the second inequality. Once you add them up, it will tell you that the objective function value cannot be less than one.